Well, with this, let's dwell into the first session, that is, when atoms meet bits, the foundation of our new reality. The Accenture Technology Vision 2023 explores how technologies like generative AI, metaverse, cloud, science tech, and more will aid the next wave of business transformation that will create the foundations of a new reality, a shared reality that seamlessly converges the physical lives we've been leading with the digital lives we've been rapidly expanding. And it'll be initiated by Mark Carroll Billiard, who's a senior managing director of technology innovation and Accenture Labs. Mark has been with Accenture for more than 25 years and has worked across all five industry groups we serve. He has held several global leadership roles within Accenture's technology groups, including serving as the global lead of the emerging technology practice. He has worked across several cutting edge areas of IT, including voice recognition, knowledge-based systems, neutral networks, and quantum commuting. Let's enjoy this session. Good morning, everyone. I'm very delighted to be with you here. Three years after I came and I presented our tech vision in 2020, it was just before pandemic and wow, so many things have happened since then. Uh, but I'm very happy to be with you today, unfortunately, uh, virtually. I want to talk to you about the Technology Vision 2023. It's very exciting because there's so many things that happened during the pandemic. And one thing that we saw is that, for sure, human being has been innovating like crazy. And the first things that we all know is how we've been able to um, discover or create a new vaccine in 18 months, which is a, really a record time uh, to save the world. And this is all leveraging what we call science tech, science technology, that helps basically to synthesize basically new vaccine, uh, again in record time, leveraging atoms on one side and the bits on the other side, like on the computing power to be able to create those vaccine. And I think this is really the topic of our tech vision today. Uh, the tech vision in 2023 is all about when atoms meet bits, and that's the foundation of a new reality that we're gonna be living in. And I wanna talk to you about four trends that we have identified through this convergence. Now, in the time that I have, I'm not gonna be able to cover absolutely every uh, four trends uh, at the same time. So what I suggest, and because there's a lot of hype related to artificial intelligence, I'm gonna delve more into the first trend, and then I'll give uh, a snippet related to all the uh, three other trends. So without further ado, let's dive in into generalizing AI, which is the first trend of our Tech Vision 2023. So the first trend is generalizing AI, and this, we're talking about the radical ages and the new possibilities of artificial intelligence. Something I wanna be clear is that generative AI is not like an all purpose of every artificial intelligence. That doesn't mean that on every problem, generative AI will be the solution. It's very important that you understand that artificial intelligence cover many different type of disciplines, and we've done a lot of progress every kind of 10 years as you can see in the slide behind me. Starting in 19. In the 90s, there was a breakthrough related to machine learning, convoluted neural network that helped us basically to detect anomalies very quickly. And we have basically, I mean, to improve our work related to physiology. In the 2010, there was another major breakthrough. It's called deep learning. Through deep learning, we've been improving system for example, vision, recognition of pattern, recognition of object, but also we've made like tons of progress related to um, speech recognition. Now, in, uh, in the 20s, we're making a, an amazing um, a progress and another uh, revolution of artificial, uh, artificial intelligence that is still uh, leveraging neural network and we call that generative AI. I think the big difference between um, the previous advance on our network and where we are with generative AI is that we've been able to, be like, to build bigger models. 
And the bigger models we've been able to, to build are powered by a lot of information that OpenAI has been launching this. I've been, I've been working on through um, reading a lot of documentation on the web. And then we've been able to create like a huge model. We call that um, a large language model, okay? That has been able to be trained or pre-trained if you want with a lot of parameters. And the parameters basically that are basically um, creating or structuring basically uh, this large language model are in the number of a trillion parameters. It's huge, but think about it. We're talking about GPT-4. GPT-3 last year was based on 175 billion parameters. You know, if you go back at the very beginning of GPT um, in 2018, it was like a few hundred million. So you saw like the exponential growth of the parameters that's gonna help us to have like a better pre-trained model. This pre-trained model has also an amazing characteristic. It's multimodal. So it can recognize pictures, it can recognize text, it can recognize a lot of things. And the other thing that is very interesting and something that is a bit of mystery for um, the discipline is that we see that when we train uh, the system on one activity, it can be really good at other activities that are a bit different. Something that we could not achieve 10 years ago. A neural network was really trained for a specific activity but if we would use that for another activity, it would not be so good. Now our foundation model and the large language model that are built on top of it are multi-model but multi-task as well. And that's really a breakthrough. As I said, this is not like the only solution for solving problems. We will still leverage the old knowledge systems, if you want, with expert system and knowledge base and rules and facts will still use uh, the machine learning as we know it, the deep learning, and obviously generative, generative AI. What's important to understand is that generative AI and the work that it will be providing will not replace human beings. I wanna be very clear about this. A lot of people that says like, oh, generative AI will take away jobs from people. No, generative AI will automate tasks. So people will work with generative AI as a co-pilot, something that needs to be un un understood. We've done a study that shows that, shows that 40% of working hours across industries can be eventually impacted by large language model. That's great. That means that there is 40% 40 40 that we can eventually automate so that people can really devote their time on the 60% even more interesting task that they will be able to, uh, to achieve. We really believe within Accenture that it's not about human versus machine, but it's human plus machine. And generative AI will give super power for human so that they're gonna be able to do their job faster, better, and with greater quality. That's something that is very important that you understand. Now, what people will need to understand is that in the context of this free train model, there are gonna be really two ways that we're gonna be able to leverage them. Many clients will start to learn about generative AI, and the way they will do that is that they will access on the cloud through APIs to those capabilities, and they will start consuming them. They will question the system to get an answer. We call that prompting. They will write prompts, and they get an answer. Eventually, if they want to get a better answer, they will work to make the better prompt to get a better answer to what they're looking for. We call that prompt engineering. But if you want to get the best value of the system, eventually you need to add your own data. And that's where you're gonna start customizing it. And by customizing it, you make those systems your own systems that bring even more value to your company. We believe that we'll see these, type, these two populations in terms of clients leveraging generative AI, but over time, we'll see probably more clients delving into customizing those um, large language models. Now there's gonna be many things that those models are gonna be able to see. As you can see from the slide behind me, the first thing they're gonna be able to do is to advise. You know, we see bank 
for example, that's going to be using, uh, using generative AI systems, basically, um, to advise their clients. And they're going to be co-pilot of their agents to provide, like, you know, uh, new advice related to financial investment or to explain, basically, why some of transactions have been generated in this and that. That's going to be very important. The second aspect that we see is that on the creation, you know, the creative mindsets of human being can be expanded or accelerated through generative AI. We've seen that in generative AI systems that exist today. You heard about DALI, you heard about table foundations and everything. With them, you can create like really amazing pictures. Automation is gonna be big as well. As we've been leveraging automation using remote uh, robotics process automation, we'll be also leveraging generative AI to collect more automation. Protecting, you know, everything that's gonna be about regular, regulatory rules. Helping basically people also to leverage generative AI in cybersecurity capabilities. And to understanding, have an explanation related to how malware basically has been uh, impacting your organization. Generative AI can help you with this. And the last but not the least one, and probably one of my favorite is coding. I'm a programmer myself. And I know that generative AI is going to be really amazing to help me to program faster. I'll be talking to the system, and eventually the system will create like a business logic for me or program into the language of my choice. In fact, it's very interesting to see that, you know, I would say the next programming language will be a napkin. And let me explain this. You know, when I started to program, I was using punch cards. Uh, we were programming COBOLs. Uh, what you see here is that um, there was this picture from OpenAI that shows that uh, you can design a website by just drawing on a napkin, basically, what looks, what looks like the website. And then Generative AI will generate the, the website uh, for you. I believe that the next uh, waves of programming is going to be to write, basically, an idea of the program, and eventually the program will be generated by the system. Last but not least is that I wanted to explain exactly what you know, generative AI will change in terms of acceleration for, for everyone. The first thing is that there's going to be like three areas where we're going to see like the big impact. Number one is that generative AI domain itself. We're just like touching the beginning of generative AI. There's much more progress we need to do. We'll see like GPT-5, GPT-6. We're going to, you know, augment and increase the number of parameters that we have. Today we have one trillion. Maybe tomorrow we'll have less several trillions. And we'll see how this machine is going to be even uh, smarter. The second thing is that we talk about multimodal. I think we need to work on other modality of the systems. We've been working on videos, text. We need to work on other type of artifacts. The third thing that's going to be important on generative AI is to think about how we're going to be building those large language model. Right now they're very uh, computing um, um, intensive. Um, they're very big to, and very complex to build. We need to accelerate this. The third one thing is that we will have to see is that how they're going to be adopted by the business. is not if they're going to be adopted by the business, is how they will be adopted by the business, because they will be. And the third thing is that that's going to be very important is to answer what's going to be the impact of this generative AI capabilities related to driving a responsible artificial intelligence. Within Accenture, this is something that is very important for us. We want to make sure that every new technology that we're putting in place within Accenture or we're working with our client is responsible um, by design. So the responsibility aspect of generative AI is going to be very important. How will we uh, develop in the future? This is something that we're going to be working on. So the second trend is your data, my data, our data, and why transparency will become our most precious resource. I think what's very important to understand is that obviously we talk about generative AI, we'll talk about all the progress we're making by converging digital world and physical world. They need a lot of data. Whether you capture the operation data from the sensor and then you're gonna be upgrading basically your digital twin or your machine learning capabilities, um, all these things are gonna be requiring a lot of data. So what you need to do is that you need to access this data that have been siloed in your organization. And we see that there's gonna be a new type of technology to do that, you know, mesh. Um, mesh models or fabric models that help you basically to uh, unclose basically, I mean, all this data and access it. Um, there are going to be also other capabilities to do federated learning 
and leveraging all these data. Uh, eventually, you can anonymize them, but there's like you can also use um, privacy preserving computing capabilities, something that our labs are using through homomorphic encryption and so forth. So you're gonna be able to leverage this data, encrypt it, be able to run algorithms that are themselves encrypted and get basically a data that has been as an output encrypted, but you're gonna be able to still to leverage in your business. All those new capabilities will help you to access this data, which again is gonna be fueling new opportunities and new value for our clients. So um, I want to leave you with just like this um, um, introduction uh, to this trend and again, it's like access. The third trend, it's all about digital identity. I think you need to understand that if we want to merge two worlds, the physical and the digital world, then we need to work out what we're talking about, like the identity. But not only the identity, also like the, the notion of ownership, ownership of asset, of product, exactly as it happens in the physical world. On the physical world, you have your identity card, your passport, you have basically, um, you know, certificate of ownership, you have your invoice, you have all those different things. How is this gonna play in the digital world? Whether you're gonna be in the metaverse or you're gonna be elsewhere, how are you gonna converge basically all these things? How are you gonna go from one metaverse to another one? There's more than 400 metaverses in the world today. How are you gonna buy something in one metaverse and carry that in another metaverse? How you will be known for who you are and what you wanna do from one metaverse to another one? That's gonna be very important. So the third trend is digital identity, ID for everyone and ID for everything. I think this is very well understood that if you want to merge two worlds, the physical world and digital world, you need to provide people, you need to provide object and identification. And as you have an identification uh, in the physical world, like your passport, your identity card, or you have certificate of ownership for your car, um, uh, we call that in France, like carte grise, you know, you need to have the equivalent in the uh, digital world. Uh, we see that's gonna be more and more important. And we see that there's like different options, I mean, to build architecture on providing identification. One is called a centralized approach, and the other one is uh, more a decentralized approach. Um, a good system, like obviously, is a guard system that you know that has been deployed in India for quite some time already. It's a centralized-based system and we have 1.2 billion Indians that have been registered. The future is to have kids, you know, to have their own identity. And everyone will have identity at one point of time to be able to accelerate the way they access like public services, registration for marriage, um, how you access uh, properties. But as I was talking about identification for people, it's important to understand that there will be also equivalent for identification for assets okay, for product, for uh, objects. And Accenture is pushing the boundaries uh, related to uh, defining basically, for example, universal wallet, for example, how you're gonna be able to pay in this digital world and everything. Um, we're working on the um, Lunix um, Open Foundation for wallets and everything. This is something that we're, we're pushing a lot of, uh, and we're putting a lot of energy into this. I can't spend more time to talk about this. I know it's very important, but I want to go to a, a fourth trend and the fourth trend is, is one of my favorite, I would say, is our, our forever frontier, the big bang between computing and science. The story here is that you heard about me talking about generative AI. You heard me talking about digital twin. You heard me talking about how next generation computing will accelerate things that we're doing. We heard, you heard me uh, at the introduction talking about how we've been able to create like a vaccine in a record time. All this is the acceleration of science tech through technology. Computing power, cloud, data, digital twin, neural network, uh, machine learning, all these different things will help us basically to reinvent the way we do drug discovery, material science, and so forth. Just to give you a couple of examples, we are working in our lab in Dublin to work in not in vitro lab, not in vivo lab, but what I call in silico lab. We're building basically a digital twin of a wet lab in a computer to, do, to be able to do drug discovery, to be able to do prediction of how a disease basically will evolve over time, like neurodegenerative disease, for example, like Alzheimer. And this is thanks to the progress of artificial intelligence, of computing, and all these things. Um, I feel and I believe that we're tapping into an amazing capabilities 
that's going to be provided through this uh, new technology. And the way we're going to be living and we're going to be uh, working is going to be radically changed in the coming 10 years. Thanks for your time and see you next year. Thank you, Mark, for this insightful elaboration of the technology paradigm. Since Mark couldn't be here with us today in person, let's send him our warm regards and gratitude. Can we have a huge round of applause for this session?